Well, my grandfather, Ben W. Taylor, um, was born in 1907, and he died in 1984. Um, he started building guitars in 1936. Everything he got into, he got into in a way that uh, it would cause him to have to create special tools, special ways to, to go at it, uh, to be efficient, uh, ways to make the job better. Uh, he was a real perfectionist. And so a lot of the things he developed were uh, in that uh, search for perfection. My grandfather uh, was, was very inventive. He built guitars using a double truss rod system that he modified and made smaller. And by doing that, what he was able to do is thin the neck down until uh, the electric guitars that he was building were very nice thin necks that didn't cause you to have hand cramps if you played bar chords and those sort of things. And he built many, many guitars using that thin neck technology. And unlike some guitars, the, the neck thickness does not change. It stays the same as you go up the neck. It doesn't graduate and come up. And that also keeps hand cramps from happening. And it makes the guitar really easy to play. I've carried through his thin neck technology through all the guitar development that I've done. I was born in 1950, and I started working with him when I was a boy. I learned uh, guitar making from him in his shop, and uh, we built several guitars together in, in through my teenage years up into the 60s. I had a separate part of the shop that he assigned to me and had my own set of tools. I knew not to get into his tools. Uh, we worked together on, on many instruments. He was, he was an extremely talented, natural luthier. Not only did I learn to build guitars for my grandfather, but I certainly learned to repair guitars for my grandfather. In fact, uh, some of the very first things I learned to do were to repair. Many of the problems uh, that cause these repairs to come about are design problems that are built into the guitars. Some of those guitar players are pretty familiar with. One of them is that uh, the neck can warp. Um, Gibson in the early 1920s invented the adjustable truss rod, which uh, took care of that problem. What they didn't solve was that the neck can still pull. Most of the traditional guitars that, that we know about also have another problem, and that is the, the bridges tend to tilt forward with the string tension through the ears, and the guitar tends to belly up, and uh, that, re that causes various repairs to happen, but all of these things affect the action and the playability of the guitar, make the guitar hard to play. And many of the, the, the neck warping because of the string tension and the bridge pulling up, those things also affect the tuning of the guitar, and the guitar will not play in tune properly. As a conservator for collectors, I work on lots of these great old guitars. In fact, through the years I've worked on hundreds of Martins and Gibsons and, and really valuable, fine old instruments. And those instruments all have similar problems. Part of the reason for the design of this new guitar is not only to, to provide big new sounds that we've never had before, but to solve these service problems that still go on today. The guitars that are being made today, really the, the bracing patterns and the structure of the guitar really goes back to the 1850s. So the, as we got into the 1900s and Gibson was, was the first to start, Gibson started to carve guitars kind of like violins and use steel strings on them more like mandolins had been using. Later on, Martin had uh, X bracing in their guitars and they had small guitars at that time. They adapted the steel strings to those X brace guitars which ended up being a new sound for them. Early in the 1970s uh, I worked in research and development, electronics and software development and I was waiting for a printout. The printers in those days were pretty slow and uh, uh, waiting for a printout, a vision came into my head, and just as clear as I can see you now, I saw the water spider that I'd remembered seeing as a child. I'd remembered seeing these little water spiders skating around on the surface of the water. And it brought to mind that uh, it was a gift. 
And I knew at that moment that if I could take the load distribution principles that the water spider used to sit on the surface of the water, and if I could build up a platform that the guitar could be constructed around, that mo modeled what he did on the water surface, that I could distribute the sound out over more surface area of the soundboard and to develop a bigger sound. A traditional X-Brace guitar top delivers only about 30 square inches of active surface. The Water Spider system delivers over 120 square inches of active surface, four times the active surface. Another benefit of the Water Spider Brace top is that there's no break-in period. The tops sound open and free just as if they had been aged for 50 or 60 years.